In the Club Random Podcast, guest Russell Brand shares a joke about cigars and cigarettes, which leads to a conversation about circumcision and the correct plural of phallus. Mar teases Brand about his rock star persona and former drug addiction, but Brand explains that despite the allure of sex, drugs, and rock and roll, he found himself empty and unfulfilled. Brand shares his idealistic worldview, which includes a pursuit of self-actualization, redemption, love, and living a worthwhile life. They start discussing the conflict between Russia and Ukraine. Brand argues that both Russia's actions and Biden's actions can be true, as Putin is known to have committed acts of violence and started wars, while Biden's son has some shady business dealings in Ukraine. As they drink shots, they talk about how Brand's accent reminds Mar of Eric Idle's character in Monty Python, and they discuss how comedy can be a way of commenting on politics. They agree that comedic commentary has become more prevalent in recent years, and Mar notes that shows that feature hosts rendering opinions, such as his own show, are becoming more popular. However, Mar argues that many late-night talk shows are now just preaching to a liberal audience rather than trying to present different views or look under the surface of issues. For example, Mar argues that the way people in the US react to the drug ivermectin is ridiculous, as the drug is prescribed by doctors to humans, but people have knee-jerk reactions and label those who support it as witches. Bill Maher and Russell Brand also discuss how the abundance of information available through the internet has created a situation where a central narrative can no longer be established without being challenged. Maher references a book by a former CIA analyst called Martin Gurry, who argues that the amount of information being generated and created has doubled every year since 2002, creating a tidal wave of information that has the potential to disrupt traditional power structures. Gurry argues that this disruption has led to a choice between altering the way power operates or doubling down on authoritarianism. Marr and Brand also discuss the potential threat of authoritarianism in America, with Marr arguing that Trump's refusal to accept the results of the 2020 election and the willingness of a substantial portion of his party to go along with that claim is the greatest threat to authoritarianism in America. Brand, on the other hand, suggests that the greater threat is the lack of significant change that occurs regardless of who wins elections. The two also touch on the idea that while America has significant problems, most people's lives are not an unremitting nightmare which may explain why there is not more widespread protest against the status quo. Brand suggests that people's lack of belief in change is due to despondency and despair and a kind of castration of the spirit. He goes on to talk about how Mark Fisher's book, Capitalist Realism, argues that capitalism has become so ingrained in our society that it's hard to imagine any other system. Marr and Brand also discuss the numerous protest movements occurring around the world, but feel that there is a lack of real vision and change being suggested by leaders. They also touch on the idea that some of the population has become redundant in the post-industrial world, which has led to the opioid crisis and societal issues. Brand also suggests that some Democrats may have preferred Trump to win than to see Bernie Sanders win the presidency. Human nature and the potential for positive change in the world is brought up. Marr expresses his belief that people are inherently selfish, which means economic systems need to account for individual self-interest. However, he does not view humanity negatively and encourages lifting up those who are struggling rather than putting others down. Brand shares a similar viewpoint, stating that he believes in enshrining and elevating higher principles such as compassion, kindness, service, and unity. He believes that systemic issues prevent positive change from occurring, including a requirement for profit poverty and an abandoned and suffering class of people. Both Marr and Brand acknowledge the challenging nature of their work, with Brand noting his own personal struggles with addiction and challenging times. They then discuss the idea that in stand-up comedy, there is a lot of pain that sad clowns go through, but this pain typically occurs in the first few years of the comedian's career as they are learning to be funny in front of people. Ma praises Brand's natural gift for comedy and expresses his disappointment that Brand doesn't perform in America more often. He mentions that Joe Rogan has encouraged Brand to do more shows at clubs and work hard to get that audience. However, Brand admits that he doesn't have the same kind of dutiful attitude as some other American comedians who are willing to play anywhere to win over their audience. Mar talks about the old template for achieving success in comedy, which involved having six clean tonight show shots before moving to California and then getting a sitcom. Brand notes that there is shamanism in stand-up comedy, which has the ability to create beautiful feelings in the room and explore incredible ideas. He believes that his foray into movies and television is far removed from what he actually wants to do. Mar acknowledges that HBO has been a great place for him and expresses his admiration for the network's policy of hiring people to do shows and then completely leaving them alone. He acknowledges that while the network lets some bombs slip by, they still manage to attract real talent because of their ability to offer creative freedom. Mar mentioned that traditional media like TV is moving towards obsolescence as new platforms like Rumble are being embraced. 
Rumble is a competitor to YouTube, and its unique selling point is non-censorship. Brand pointed out that Rumble was initially taken up by a lot of right-wing voices. But the platform allows anyone to own their content and talk about what they want, which is important for freedom of speech. Brand is interested in a re-emergent populism, which empowers people and gives them control over their communities. However, he mentioned that the media landscape is currently plagued with constant censorship and cancel culture from the left. Marr pointed out that even though there is a threat of censorship from the right, the left is much more in his face and is a daily problem. The two agreed that free speech is important, and people should not be afraid to express their thoughts and ideas. The problem with the emergence of a free speech platform like Rumble is whether it is truly a platform for everyone or just for right-wingers. Marr argues that people on the libertarian right would believe in freedom of expression, while those on the far left believe in letting individuals be who they want to be. However, Marr believes that a truce between traditionalism and progressivism is necessary at this point. He advocates for leaving each other alone and focusing on more significant issues. Brand acknowledges that there have been right-wing contributors to Rumble, the platform they are discussing. However, he believes in open dialogue and discourse on all relevant topics. Brand is interested in resolving issues collegiately and collectively with good faith arguments, without looking for ways to attach everything to Trump. Mar compliments Brand's passion for issues, but cautioning him to not forget that he is an entertainer. Mar references Lenny Bruce as an example of someone who was so passionate that they forgot their role as an entertainer. Brand talks about how he used to live hedonistically, seeking pleasure and avoiding responsibilities like marriage and having children. He acknowledges that while it may have worked for some people like Rod Stewart, it didn't work for him. Brand explains that he realized that what he sought out was a fantasy of a boy, and that living hedonistically didn't fulfill his spiritual yearning for something more, like values, community, connection, and meaning. He argues that pleasure, like eating food or having sex, is perfunctory and has an evolutionary purpose. But he wonders what its function is beyond that. He also mentions the opioid crisis in the US as a reflection of the significant pain that some people experience and need to numb. Brand distinguishes between his experience with hedonism as an addict and his perspective on maturation, saying that he didn't need to have a family or conform to social norms to feel mature, but that living hedonistically didn't work for him. Mar admits that he doesn't go beyond two things in life, work and love, whereas Brand admits to being a searcher and seeker, pondering the unponderable. However, Mar doesn't judge those who do ponder the spiritual side of life, and he's not definitive about the existence of God. He compares those who try to answer unanswerable questions to individuals who think they can climb a wall when it's a million miles high. Both men agree that the amount of knowledge concerning the unknown is negligible, and the little that is understood amounts to zero. They also discuss the negative effects of religion and the harm it can cause. Mar discusses the practice of circumcision in the Jewish faith, known as bris, and explains how sometimes the moil, who performs the circumcision can transmit herpes to the baby. Mar argues that it is a form of child abuse and that people can believe in whatever they want, as long as it does not cause harm. Brand brings up the practice of snatching a child when a lama dies in Buddhism to find the reincarnation of the deceased lama, and how it can be seen as child abuse. They both agree that religion can be a scam, and Mar argues that it is the biggest scam ever, compared to other scams like the police stopping a pretty girl. Brand points out that we do need ceremony and ritual, but it becomes problematic when it involves harming others. Russell Brand discusses his spiritual beliefs, which involve the potential for an ulterior realm and a benign intent towards one another. He also mentions how apparent separateness emerged from unity, which is underwritten by the explanation of the Big Bang. However, he agrees with Terence McKenna's idea that the Big Bang is just one free miracle and doesn't solve a lot of things. Bill Maher then brings up the point that as someone who is not religious, he is also taking the Big Bang on faith since the concept is difficult to grasp. They recognize that both religion and science require a curtailing of inquiry at some point and ultimately come down to the point of miracle. Despite their disagreements on the origins of the universe, both Russell Brand and Marr agree on the fundamental aspects of being moral and loving one another. Russell emphasizes the importance of honoring non-separateness, diversity, individuality, and the ever-expanding fractal nature of our reality. Bill argues that the Ten Commandments, which were written in the Bronze Age, have limited value, and Russell disagrees. He suggests that the commandments are more about finding oneself and not engaging in idolatry. Russell also argues that there is much to be learned from the values that preceded civilization as we understand it, particularly in a time of fracture and nihilism. He believes that we should not be dismissive of religious documentation based on utility, and that spirituality is essential to counteract nihilism. However, Bill raises counterarguments, suggesting that dominion and territory drive the horrible actions attributed to religions in contrast to post-enlightenment rationalism. 
The conversation reveals how religion and spirituality have evolved over time, and the challenges of distinguishing between religious and nationalistic ideologies in contemporary society. They also touch on the concept of hermeneutics which refers to a set of documents that underwrite a particular faith. Brand shares that he is an autodidact and has shallow knowledge in various areas. Moreover, he talks about how politics is often an extension of a person's personality. Mar and Brand both agree that it is important to have conversations with people who hold different beliefs than us. They criticize the tendency to attack and cancel those we disagree with instead of engaging in productive discussions. They also discuss the issue of ageism and how it is often used as a poor argument. They highlight the importance of respecting and learning from others. Then the media's portrayal of Italian Prime Minister, Maloney is brought up as the media was quick to label her as a fascist, but Mar disagrees, citing that her statements align with traditional conservative values. He questions the media's narrative and advocates for neutral journalism rather than advocacy journalism, which injects opinions and biases in the front page. Brand goes on to express his belief that the liberal establishment has been co-opted by military-industrial complex, pharmaceutical, and financial interests. He believes that there is a distaste for working people and ordinary Americans, which is masked by conversations about identity and excluded cultural groups. They agree that there is a lack of political party that represents the interests of ordinary Americans. The conversation then turns to Ukraine and the conflict with Russia. Brand suggests that the West lobbied against the peace deal and backed a coup in Ukraine that gave Crimea to Putin. He argues that the American unipolar agenda and desire for global hegemony contribute to the destabilization of Russia. Brand believes that a geopolitical perspective is needed to understand the complex nature of the conflict, and simplistic notions of demonizing Putin are unproductive. Ma notes that the West didn't want to destabilize Russia after the fall of the Soviet Union and hoped that Russia would become a Western democracy. However, he also acknowledges that mistakes were made, such as keeping NATO strong even though there was no Soviet Union. Brand provides various facts and perspectives on the conflict, including the blockage of a Russia-Ukraine peace deal by Western powers, Mitch McConnell's support for helping Ukraine against Russian invaders, and the Pentagon's spending on defense contractors. Ma responds by saying that both sides could be true on the one hand, there are people who have a vested interest in war and keeping the defense industry strong, while on the other hand, the war could be a valiant endeavor to protect and support the Ukrainian people. Brand questions whether the mainstream media is presenting all aspects of the conflict and discusses how humanitarianism often motivates the military-industrial complex. Check out the full podcast by clicking the link in the description below. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe for more content like this. Thank you for listening to this podcast summary episode of The Pod Slice.